Welcome to our finance unit. We're going to start out our unit today by talking about a very powerful financial tool, and that tool is interest. Um, interest is generally given to you as some type of percentage rate, and we're interested in what is happening to your money over time. Um, keep in mind every time that we talk about interest, sometimes interest is a bad thing like when you're paying on a loan. Sometimes interest is a good thing like when you're putting money in a savings account. Um, either way, the calculations are fairly similar um, whether you are um, paying interest or gaining interest. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll talk about the advantages of the system both ways here. Uh, when we start our little adventure here in interest land, um, we are going to start by discussing simple interest. Um, simple interest is where you just are have, um, you're making some sort of either an investment or a loan, and you are going to have a particular percentage of return for that money that you're, that you're putting in. Um, the, the basic idea of simple interest is that it, there's just a flat percentage involved. So let's say, for example, that um, we'll use my son Evan because he just did this the other day. Uh, he, his little brother wanted to buy a video game, and Evan had some leftover birthday money. And so he went ahead and said, I will give you the $5 that I have, but when you pay me back, you need to pay me back with 10% interest. So he's kind of, you know, holding this over his little brother's head. So his little brother is seven, and he wants that $5, so he's going to go ahead and take up Evan on this deal. So if this is all that we're talking about, then if we want to figure out how much interest his little brother has to pay, all we do is we take that $5, and we need to figure out what 10% of $5 is. So um, we take the $5, and we multiply it by 10%. Remember, when we're dealing with formulas, we always need to change those percentages into decimals. So it would just be $5 times 0.10. You can do it on your calculator if it's not something you can do in your head. And in this particular case, I get 0.5. And since I'm dealing with money, that would be 0.5 or 50 cents. Um, and this is the amount of interest that he's charging his little brother for that particular loan. Um, $50 in interest is how much he owes, so the total amount that, he'd ha that his little brother would have to repay is, of course, the $5 loan plus the 50 cents of interest. So a total amount of $5.50. So this is going to be real similar to that first homework problem that you have. It just gives you a flat amount. It gives you a percentage of interest that you're needing to repay, and it's just basically a percentage problem where you multiply the amount by the percent written as a decimal, and you can get your total. Um, that's really the basics for what there is in terms of simple interest. Um, the next piece that we have is sometimes is obviously there's no um, repayment deadline here. Evan didn't say you have to pay me back tomorrow or next week or next month. He just said, pay me back, and this is how much you have to pay me back at the end. Um, however, banks don't really like to work that way. Um, they want you to pay them back as soon as possible, so they put a little bit of a time stigma to it. Um, so how does that all work out? Um, most banks actually use something called compound interest, which is a little bit more complicated, but there is one... Govern, one government entity, believe it or not, out there that actually deals with simple interest. Um, the federal government will give out treasury bills, or treasure, or treasury notes, rather, um, and we call them T-notes. And the T-notes actually use simple interest. It's a, it's a type of bond. The book goes into kind of a better explanation for it. But let's suppose that we have, um, let's say, a $2,000 T-note that we take out, um, and we take it out with... Let's do 5% interest. Um, this interest is going to be given to us as an annual rate, and they usually are uh, given as interests. Interest rates are generally given as annual rates, and that's something that has <laughs> changed in the last 20 or 30 years as people realize that um, it's hard to compare interest rates if you don't have a standard comparison time. Um, so this is saying 5% every year. Now, T-notes, the idea with the T-note is you're going to um, give the government this $2,000 loan. They're going to pay you back 
at a 5% annual rate, and they're going to pay you back. Sometimes they pay you back every quarter. Um, so every three months, they're going to pay you a portion of whatever interest you've earned. Now keep in mind, if they're paying you quarterly, that means that they're paying you four times a year. You're earning 5% interest annually. So if we're being paid quarterly, we're only we're not earning all of that interest. We're only earning a fourth of that interest when we're talking about simple interest. Um, and so we can actually kind of figure out exactly what percentage of interest we'd get, and we can figure out what, how much interest you'd get paid that first three months. And then three months later, you'd get that same interest payment again. Three months later, you get the same interest again. And then what's going to happen is um, eventually our T note is going to come up due. We call it maturity, and that's basically when the government has to give you their loan, the amount of money that you borrowed back. So let's say that this is a T-note that has maturity in three years. So what that means is you're going to get paid four times the first year of interest, four times the second year in interest, four times the third year in interest. You're going to end up with 12 interest payments, and then at the end of the 12 months, you also get your two th original $2,000 back. Um, so that's the way that T-notes work. Now, um, in the um, in the book, they go to a lot of trouble about figuring out what this, if you're getting paid quarterly, dividing the interest rates, all of that exciting stuff. But at the end of the day, simple interest is simple. And um, the, you don't even need to get nearly as complex as what the book was actually asking you to do here. The formula that we use to calculate simple interest is this, I equals P naught, or this little P0, um, we often call P naught times R times T. Now, what do each of these things stand for? The I stands for interest, of course. That's what we're talking about. P naught, with P with this little zero, is our starting amount or our principal. So that's our new economics term for the day. Um, principal is just the starting amount in your account if you're um, starting a savings account, or it's the starting amount of your loan, how much money you borrow. Um, this is not a multiplication. It's nothing else. It, the little zero here just means that it's the starting value. Um, and a lot of times you'll hear the word not, P not. It's just like an old British term for zero, but it's fairly common um, discussion notation. R stands for the annual interest rate. And as long as you put the annual rate in here, you're going you're to you're keep yourself out of trouble. And T stands for your time. And as long as you keep your time in years, you're going to stay out of trouble as well. So I'm going to simplify the problem that you have um, in your homework a little bit by just saying, uh, so the example that they have for the T note in the book is a little bit unnecessarily complex. As long as you use the annual rate and your T is in years, you don't have to worry about dividing the interest rate and all of that crazy, crazy stuff. So we're just going to use this formula. Um, if I want to figure out the total amount of interest that I'm going to get from this T note, I can go in and say, OK, I want to find the interest. P naught is my starting amount, which in this case is $2,000. My R is 5%. And just remember that you always have to write those percents in decimal form. And my T is how many years I'm going to keep this T note in production. And in this case, it's for three years. And then if I want to get the interest, I just multiply those values together. So coming over here, we have $2,000 times by 0 0.05 for my 5% times by three years. And at the end of the day, I'm going to have ended up earning $300 for my T-note investment. Um, and that's the amount of interest that I will have earned at the end of that period of time. So kind of cool, a lot more simple than trying to divide and then figure out how many payments there are, blah, 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 blah. If you actually wanted to figure out how much interest you'd have gotten during each of those payout periods, you could just divide by how many. There were 12 payouts, so you could do 300 divided by 12. Um, and you could, could walk away and say, ooh, that, I'd get $25 every three months until the end. And then I'd get my $2,000 back at the end of the three-year period. So that's the way that T-notes work. This is our special magic lucky interest, simple interest formula when we're talking about simple interest. Now keep in mind, most banks have a different method of doing stuff. The federal government's one of the few groups that actually does use simple interest for their calculations. Um, so when we see these T-notes, we are always talking about simple interest and can just use this real simple formula. How much you're paying times by the annual interest rate times by T, which is in the number of years when we're trying to figure that out. All right, so that'll get you through the first two homework problems. The next two homework problems come up with um, 
or start talking about a new type of investment. It's not a, t a treasury note. It is called a treasury bill. Um, no, we don't need to save. Okay. So if we are talking about a treasury bill, this is a little bit different than the treasury note where you give an amount, they pay you interest on it, and then they pay you the original amount back. Um, the idea with a treasury bill is that you're going to start out with a certain, you're going to basically say, okay, I want to have $5,000 at the end of this, but I am going to get this, I'm going to pay maybe $4,500 at the beginning. So I'm going to make an investment of $4,500. I'm going to give that to the government. And at the end of whatever my maturity period is, so however many years later, they're going to give me $5,000 at the end. So a little bit different than what happened with the T-notes where you're getting payments every single way along the way and then you get your original payment back. Here what you're doing is you're buying something at a discounted rate and they're going to give you an advanced rate at the end of that period of time. Um, the other formula in... The last problem, we use this formula, I equals P naught RT. And what this gave us was just how much interest we earned. If we'd like to figure out how much total amount something is worth, we use a slight variation on this formula. And it's just the total amount that you earn is just what you started with plus your interest. Now, using a few other things we get, we can kind of put this all together and we end up with this formula that's really the useful one here um, that they gave you in the book. And that's this. A is the final amount of money that you have at the end. P naught, of course, is that initial starting value or your principal. R is still oops, principal. That's spelled really well there. Um, to, 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 to do. There we go. Um, R, of course, is your annual interest rate. And again, it's real important to stick with that annual thing. And as long as they give it to us in that form, we're happy. And T is the number of years. Sticking with an annual rate here and a time in years is going to be what keeps you out of trouble. And so we can use this formula here to get straight to the answer that we want. Now, when we're talking about a T-bill, let's suppose that we have, that we're going to buy a two-year T-bill. We'll just do this one here. We're going to say that we're going to buy it at $4,500. And two years later, the government's going to give me $5,000 for it. My question is, what interest rate would this be equivalent to? How much interest was I earning? Okay. In order to figure this out, we can use this formula here. Basically, what's happening in this problem is I want to end up with a total of $5,000. So I'm going to put $5,000 in for A. P naught is my starting or initial value. In this case, I started by taking a $4,500 loan out from the government. Then, or giving a $4,500 loan to the government, I guess is a better way to say it. And then we're going to multiply that times 1 plus my interest rate, which I don't know, times by my time, which is the number of years. And in this case, I'm talking about a two-year period. So what I have here is 5,000 equals 4,500 times 1 plus R times 2. Um, you're probably going to keep yourself out of trouble just a little bit if you go ahead and write that as 1 plus 2R. You're a little bit more used to seeing things that way and more likely to do the mathematics correctly if you take the time to do that. Now, at this point, what I'd like to do is I'd like to solve this equation. So first of all, notice that my R is stuck inside the parentheses. So if I'd like to get it out, I can use the distributive property to multiply this out. I get 5,000 equals 4,500 times, oops, just kidding. Use the distributive property. 4,500 times 1 is 4,500 plus 4,500 times 2R is 9,000R. Now, if I'd like to solve this, the next thing that I'm going to do, I need to get the R by itself. I have to get rid of the, both the 9,000 and the 4,500. I'm going to minus the 4,500 first from each side. That's going to leave me with 500 here equals 9,000R. I want to get R by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 9,000. That gets the R alone. And then I'm going to do 500 divided by 9,000, because I don't know what that is in my head. 
and I end up with points r equals point zero five 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 five. We'll just round it to four decimals here, so point zero five five six. So that's my r. Now remember, r is my annual interest rate. However, because I got R out from a formula, remember that formulas always deal with rates in decimal form. So if I'd like to talk about what interest rate that is, I can, all I have to do, move the decimal two places to the right, and I can say R is equal to 5.56%. So this particular investment, by buying this discounted $4,500 um, account, T-bill, um, I'm essentially earning 5.56% annual interest, and at the end of two years, I would have that $5,000 in terms of what they give me at the end of it. Um, the last way that, that um, th so this, that's kind of similar to problem number three on your homework. And um, the last type of problem, oh, I didn't want to save it. Let's try that again. No, file. Sorry about that. Okay, so here's my blank page. So um, the last type of problem that we have is let's suppose that we want, we're, we're looking at T-bills again, and let's suppose that we want to get a T-bill that at the end is going to be worth $500. So that we call that a $500 face value. And let's say that this is a 13-week bill. So 13 weeks later, I'm going to get this $500. Um, and I would like to I would like to do what? I would like to earn 2% interest. So at the end of 13 weeks, I want to have $500. I need to have earned at least 2% interest. And my question is, how much would I have to pay? In order to make all of this work. So in this case, again, we're dealing with this T-bill problem. I'm going to want to use this formula, A equals P naught times 1 plus RT. In this case, I want to end up with $500, so that's the ending amount. And I, what I'm looking for is how much I would pay up front in order to get that to happen. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for P naught this time, which is a little bit different. Now, this is going to be times 1 plus R. The interest rate I'd like to earn is 2% annual interest, so 0 0.02, times by T. Now, T, remember, is the time in years. Unfortunately, I'm given the time in weeks. So you have to kind of deal with things a little bit here. If I have 13 weeks, how many years is that? Well, keep in mind that there are um, 52 weeks in a year. And so if I take my 13 weeks and I divide by 52 weeks, my units will cancel and I'll be left with the number of years. So I'm going to take that 13. I'm going to divide it by 2, or 52 rather. And when I go to put in my time in years, in this case, my time in years, 13 weeks, is a fourth of a year. So the T value that I'm going to use in this problem is 0.25. Awesome. OK, so I've set up my formula. I, want, I don't know how much I'm starting with, but I want to end up with $500. I'm going to be earning 2% interest. And I'm going to have it in this investment for only um, for only a quarter of a year, so 0.25 years. So that's where each of these pieces of information comes in. All right, now keep in mind that everything in here right now in these parentheses is just a number. There's um, no variables in there, so I can just go ahead and evaluate that. 1 plus 0 0.02 times by 0.25. And what I get there is 1.005. So I have 500 is equal to P0 times 1.005. I want to get the P0 by itself, so I'm going to divide by 1.005 on each side. And that will get me my P0 or starting amount. Um, so I do 500 divided by, oops, that's only 50. Try again, 500 divided by 1.005. 
and I end up with at the beginning of this time period for a 2% interest over just that very short period of time of just 13 weeks, I would have to buy a $497.51 starting investment. So not earning a whole lot of interest there, but then again, 13 weeks wasn't a whole lot of time. And 2% isn't a whole lot of interest when we're talking about um, about stuff. But that would be how much initial money I'd have to put in in order to make that T-bill work. Um, so again, we've just been dealing with simple interest. Um, simple interest is, of course, the simplest. Just dealing with a flat percentage. We're going to put money in. Time's going to go by. We're going to earn that percentage back. Um, or if we're borrowing money from the government, they kind of do this nice simplified thing. Um, and when we're dealing with T-bills or T-notes, which are treasury bills and treasury notes, they're dealing with simple interest. Um, when you're dealing with simple interest, this is the magic formula one you want to use. Or if you just want to know about the interest, you can use this I equals p naught times R times T. Um, if you want to know total amounts, you're dealing with this formula. So these are the only two formulas to worry about. Um, again, don't worry about all the weird complexities that the book tells you. As long as for R you're using an annual rate and for T you're using time and years, you don't have to worry about adjusting rates and all of that crazy stuff that they tell you in that couple of examples there. So simplify your life a little. Um, give that a whirl. If you need any follow-up questions, please ask them on the discussion boards. And um, we'll see you in the next video.